prepare students for the new semester. And for this edition, we have curated the best of the best to come and share their experiences with us and give us hints on how to go about the semester and to share words of advice. So we have with us David Akonmo, Adekunle Lawal, and Dan Lola Sulaimon. So these scholars have taken out time from their busy schedule to honor this invitation. So I urge us all to pay attention, take notes, and ask questions. While they are speaking, kindly type your questions in the chat box if you have any, and they will be addressed after each speaker. So remember, your final year grades actually do matter, and this is your chance to gain useful information that will aid your strategy for the coming session. So you don't just read and overread, you read smart, you work smart. So without wasting much time, I'll be introducing our first speaker, that is David Akomo. Hello, David. Thank you for joining us. You have the floor. Hi, Aisha. And hello, everybody. How do you do? So I think we are nine people on this call at the moment, which which I expected because I'm speaking to you five people and you guys are old. I just want to find out one thing so I know exactly what I'm speaking to. Is Ad uh, Adimola and Precious also in year five? Um, Adimola and Precious, Akiru. Because I know Attila Day and Kane Day are not in year five. Yeah, they're both in year five. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So, Um, Stephen has given me one assignment to speak on CG 516, 517, 533, and 534. And before I before I do that assignment, right, I think it's more important because I was thinking about what I could tell you guys that would be relevant to you guys. Um and really this is because you guys are in year five again, as I've said before. So you guys are all adults by default. You know, like says you enter by 16. Even if you did diploma, you entered by 16. You add four years, you'll be 20 plus two of strike, you'll be 22. So everybody is an adult. And everybody here probably has an idea of what they want to do with life and so on and so forth. Um, and so, so I think it is fine that the population of people here is, is a bit, is, is not so much because you have to prioritize what is important to you. So if you're interested in maybe doing music, then do music. Put your efforts towards music. If you're interested in being a fashion designer, then do that. If you're interested in advancing your sporting career, then do that. However, however, as you're doing that, for sake of academics, don't carry over. Just ensure you pass enough so you can finish. Um, but regarding uh, today's today's topic, I think it's important I tell you guys that your five is easy. So I was looking through the broadsheet of my set for year five second semester, and I could only see the first page of the broadsheet, and I saw about maybe forty six students, and twenty eight of them had above four point five um, semester GPAs. Point I'm trying to make again is year five is easy. Um, many people did well, and this is because there's a higher correlation between like the efforts that you put in and the results that you get. What I mean is in year one, year two, year three and year four, you could work very hard and then you not see results because there are so many. If you are doing a year two course, maybe 300 people are doing the course, the lecturer has to mark 300 scripts. There's a high tendency for error. In year five, you are probably less than 60, 70, around that range, such that um, it's easier for the lecturers to, um, the lecturer is less likely to make error. I think that's the exact way to put it. Also, you'll be doing some electives. So you have classes of like 10, 15 people. Again, less tendency for error. In fact, number of students that turn up for class is going to drastically reduce in year five. So again, you have like a personal connection with your lecturer. And the fact that you have just reached year five means that you have built experience in the system. There's there's really not much I can tell you. Like for instance, I'm to speak on Akiji's course. What I want to tell you that I don't know is like Ram Lapo, like it's like, you have been here for so long. So, but I think it's important you know that regarding results, if you are interested in making good results, year five is the best time to go, to go at it because you are more likely to get reward for your efforts. You are less likely to work alone and everybody's doing something. You are doing something else. You guys are already in year five. You guys are probably together and you guys work together to ensure that you guys do well. Okay, so 
another reason why I would advise you to take your five seriously is it's easier to tell a good story about your academics if you have a strong final year. So say you're on a you're on a two two or something, you're on a two point five three GPA, and year five you have four point four first semester, four point seven second semester. Is probably easier to explain your struggles as an undergraduate and conclude maybe in any application your CV whatever saying that in year five you grew older more mature and you ended on a strong note so you finished with back to back first class GPA so you finished with back to back five points or you finished with whatever it's just easier to tell a story if you end strongly so I think for guys that because um there, there are a lot of I like say opportunities in this world in any in any sphere but telling a good story is like very important so if you want to ever use your academics for anything i just advise you to take your five like seriously okay now back to the exact assignments that steven gave me i'll start with cg 516 and i'll just try to take it slowly in case anybody's jotting so that you can hear me um so cg 516 is environmental engineering 2 at least in my time was taken by my dad, Professor Akomu, and frankly, it's just there. I, I can't say it's interesting. Like for me, it was just there. And this day be subjective bias. Um, I don't advise you to attend all the classes. Again, it depends on what your goals are. If your goal is to make a five point in year five, please attend all your classes. May I attend all my classes? If your goal is going four point eight or something like that, you don't have to attend this class really you can you can miss it because again you don't have a lot of classes I, I don't know if my dad has taught you if he has taught you you're probably not going to have 10 classes in the semester maybe four five six or seven so you can play around that if you have work to do maybe you're running a job and running school together these are the kind of classes that you can miss but again again please ensure that the class is not empty because if the class is empty then of course there'll be a lecture like there'll be a problem with the lecturer so your class obviously has to be around um, so a few students have to be around to ensure that the lecturer is, feels that is, is being engaged by this by the students. In this particular course, we are going to visit, at least in my time, again, I'm speaking from my time, so whenever I say anything, I'm just speaking based on my experience with the course. We visited the treatment plant, right? And in that treatment plant, it was about how, essentially, how water is treated in the University of Lagos, the, the building at the back of hydraulics. So I advise you guys to take notes on that treatment plant it usually comes out if not always comes out question one in exam compulsory explain what you saw in that side so there's a usually a general definition of how water treatment occurs um maybe settling tank aeration sedimentation calculation calculation disinfect all those things they're usually a process but if he asks you to explain what you saw in treatment plant and you go and give him his generic answer he'll not give you good mark you say i just like you're just using a generic structure for a very specific question which asks you what you saw in that particular building so you should take notes properly during um, that particular visit you can also check the nicesa drive i think oj um developed a or created a word document or pdf that actually talked about what he saw then and i found that document very helpful to 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 um strengthen what i've already written um so yes that is when question always comes out very important take it seriously you should solve the practice questions i will give you <coughs> my father usually gives practice questions to all his students and from my experience with him and I've, i have a lot of experience with him since like my father he never goes out of the practice questions he gives bad questions and brings them out in the exam so I, I usually find it odd when students don't do well in the exam because he usually just stays within the practice questions so if he does not give you an, or he forgets, please ask him more. He's a human being, I can't forget. But he doesn't usually forget. And if he does give you, solve the practice question. It is more important than even reading, in my opinion. Like, of course, you need to read to understand what you're solving. But don't go and read and say you are, you are trying to finish up the syllabus. You don't solve any practice questions. Please don't do that. Solve the practice questions and read. Did you guys get that? Okay, I think I see thumbs up from Fash. Mm. Is that is somebody That's raising their hands up the question, Precious? No. Okay, okay, okay. 
So I think I think we got that right. Someone said that network went off. Okay, I'll just do some of bullet points. CG516, environmental engineering two, taken by Professor Komu. I didn't find the class very interesting. It was just there. You don't need to attend the classes as it as in as a set. But if you want to get like super grades, please attend your classes. You have a side visit that is very important. Take notes. Solve the practice questions. Read it. It's, for me, it wasn't hard. For most of my set mates, it wasn't hard to um generally most of the courses professor common teachers are not hard. So we, again, you guys are in year five, you know how it goes, like just solve the practice questions. And in fact, say, you can take the step for that. We didn't do it in my set, but you can take the step for that. You can solve the practice questions and then go and submit it to him and say, sir, please, I would like you to give us, like, give me your feedback on, like, my solution so that before the exam is saying, oh, okay, you did well here, you, did, you didn't do well here. You know, there's, it can happen that students solve something and think they are right. <laughs> and lecturer says what the students solve, they're not right. So to avoid that error, you can, you can decide to just go and show him. It wasn't necessary in my set, but I mean, if you are doubtful that your answers are 100% correct, you can get his feedback on them. Um, he also gives assignments. Do them. If, if, if you dub them, that's fine, in my opinion. But as you are dubbing it, like be reading it because that's like practice for you guys. So do the assignments. Um, and that's basically it for CG516. So I'm going to the next course, CG517, taken by Dr. Kije is currently the HOD of the department. I found the classes very boring. Um, he usually spends most of the time talking about how love is a destroyer, how help is a destroyer, how women are bad, you should never love anybody, something like that. And I found it very tiring as a person. You may enjoy the class, I don't know, but I didn't. And the fact that I didn't enjoy the class didn't mean that I had to show it. Like, I just smile at the man who do, uh, don't vex the man because you don't enjoy his class. Like, just smile. let him do his thing. He has power in his class. So, I'm talking about tra traffic engineering taken by um, Dr. KJ. I'm sorry that I didn't say that. Traffic engineering, CG 517. Okay, so, yeah, that's, that's that on the class. As KJ is, and I think all of you know, La Cram, La Po, La Delete has been like that before I was born. Whenever he retires, it'll be like that till then, probably. Say somebody prays for him. Anywho, so it'll give you a lot of notes to write. You should copy those notes because you will mark those notes. Right? So it's just like bulky, bulky notes writing. I'm not sure if you need to copy it yourself or you can pay somebody. I know some people pay people at the back. Um, but if you pay people at the back, just ensure they copy everything because the way he marks it, he, he picks maybe certain diagrams he wants to see, and you, you may not know the exact diagram until the day of his marking. And so if you don't see the diagram and you have copied, you have paid someone to copy the note, and person just forgot to draw those diagrams or write those particular headings that he wants to see, he can give you a bad mark for that too. Generally, advice, if you want to get five points, eh, write that note by yourself so that you know that it's you that did it too, and you'll be able to defend what you did. But I mean, if you are too busy with other things, you can just give somebody to run it for you. I think it's like 10 marks and usually everybody gets good grades, like eight, nine, 10, if you copy the notes. Okay, so Akije is, um, his test for this particular course, traffic engineering, covered the first topic. And after, after that test, it didn't come out again in the exam. So that test only covers topic one. After that, you're not using the, that topic one again not even an exam, so you just discard it. Um, is La Cram, La Paula, delete? Past question is usually, is always the same until it came to my set. So the past question he was using, there was an error in the question. And because the man is, Akija is difficult to communicate with, is, is difficult to engage, like it's difficult to speak to. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm saying, but it doesn't let you land. It takes off very fast. Um, so most people just leave him like, so you can see maybe two, two times two is 3.5 in that calculation book. And for years, more than 10 years, people just left that error two times two is 3.5 and they solve it like that in the exam and everybody gets their A. So Akija gives good grades, he likes to give good grades. If 50 people do his course, like 35 can get A. Anybody that wants to get A really will get A in this course. So it's pretty nice. But however, somebody in my class complained that, sir, two times two is not... 
3.5, two times two is four. So first he yapped the guy, yapped the guy, yapped the guy, yapped the guy, yapped the guy. Later I shall press calculator and realize that there was an error. And because he realized there was an error, it changed the past question in my set. And um, I mean that shocked us a bit. But again, the, the tables are like surveying tables where it's like quantitative reasoning. If you read for the course, you'll be able to multiply the different variables on the table and get your answer right. However, there's an issue that you, you can't confirm your answer in the exam that ah, this is what I solved. I got four in the practice. And now I'm getting 58. Like, am I right? Am I wrong? You probably you probably talk to each other in the exam room and say, ah, off a guy, off a guy. We think you get, 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 we something like that. But anyhow, Sha, I expect that it's going to repeat my year's past question for you guys. So if it does so, then just solve my year's past question. And I think the most important thing I'll tell you for Akiji is to, is to time yourself as you are practicing. So that if you solve one, two, three, four, five, six, you, you have a timer be beside you when you're solving it. Like when you are sure that you understand how to solve it, when you have practiced it so much that you can prepare for the exam, you should sit down, carry your paper, carry a timer, and solve it like you're solving it in the exam room. What this helps to do is to improve your efficiency. It makes you faster at solving it. Secondly, it gives you data on your own performance. Like it tells you that in question one, you spent 30 minutes. Question two, you spent 23 minutes. Question three, you spent 45 minutes. Question four, you spent 21 minutes. Question five, you spent 50 minutes. So that you can select the ones that take the least time so you can finish your exam on time, right? So um, you should time yourself. Also, you can mark yourself. Like you can just grid yourself and see. Akiji is la cram la po. Like you can check if you have poured out everything or you change it into your own words because more, you know if you cram everything at once. A strategy that people I know used for me, I just crammed everything and gave it to him. I know some people that did maybe the first two sentences, they will cram, they will cram the first two sentences. Then from the third and fourth sentence, you'll be writing rubbish, writing jargons because you can never read it. I mean, you can adopt that strategy. I didn't adopt it as a person, but I saw it work for people, and I think that's fine. Can I go back to the last 60 seconds? So the last 60 seconds, I only spoke about timing yourself when you're practicing when you are sitting down you should take you should do as if you're inside the exam room ensure there's no distraction put a timer time number one i fin write the time down i finish number one in 30 minutes do number two i finish number two in 21 minutes do number three and so on and so forth i hope that answers the question isaac or oh did i do what you wanted me to do okay i did all right so that's for kj again for kj attending classes is necessary if you are busy with work you're busy with your babe, you're trying to improve yourself in other fields. You don't need to attend Akiji's class. If you want to get five points, um, if you want to get five points, you don't need to attend Akiji's class. The only person I need to attend Akiji's class are the class rep and maybe like at least more than 10 students that are around because that class is stressful. Nobody wants to come to be listening to how you should help your friend and help your friend is destroyed. Yeah, one guy had his friend 50 years ago, his friend became bigger than him, something, something like that. Like nobody else listens to that. But I mean, again, the classroom should be around so that the man does not like para for you guys and do something that is drastic. And at least the representation of the class should be around. In fact, I advise if you want to get five points, just come, just go to the class. Just like just go there. Even if you are doing that in the class, just be there. Even if you are attending meeting in the class, just be there. Let him let him be up. All right. So the next course is CG 534. Let me see my time. I meant to finish in 10 minutes. All right. So CG534 is Urban Transportation by Dr. Adiboje. Um, I found the lectures boring. I didn't enjoy the class. Uh, he spent time talking about, oh, you, what state are you from? You are from Oyo. Ah, do you know this place in Oyo? Are you from Kwara? Kwara, Kwara. Where means Kwara? Where means Kwara? Yes. Why are you from in Kwara? Something like that. And man, it was just day. I just found it boring. Again, no need to attend classes. <laughs> Anybody is not going to be watching out for every particular person in the class to say um, who was there, was in there, take attendance. But if you're around, attend. Again, like you don't want the class to be empty where there's zero students. If there are zero students, the lecturer can be pissed, can go and report to HOD, say the deducting 10 marks from the entire class. You don't want that to be the case. So if you're a, pro if you're a project student, of course, please, again, if you're a project student of any of these lecturers, attend their classes because they know you. <laughs> and they'll grade your project 50% of three units in first semester and second semester. So please go for the class. So all the project students of the lecturers. 
Um, I can't really remember much about what happened in the band transportation, if I'm being honest. I know that we prompted the man a lot for the test and practice questions because he was giving us some slides in class. Then he said he was going to read different slides for, for the test. And it was just stressful. So we're disturbing him that, what was the test question? What was the test question? I think he finally answered Osha because all of us did well. That's the highest score I've got in a particular course before. And I can't remember it. So it means I didn't, I didn't work so hard and the course was just easy. Um... So prompt him for the questions of the test. For the exam, I think you should just check our past questions. For the test, even you can maybe ask you so for sheriff. I mean, I've given them my test question in the past. Just practice that. He repeats pretty much the same thing. So that's that for Dr. Adeboje. So I'm going to the last course now. And before I get into it, I'll just pause again to ensure that everybody's with me and you understand what I'm saying. I'm not speaking to only two people. So I think Aisha is understanding as you can understand what I'm saying. Precious is. Okay, some people are. Um, for those who are not understanding and maybe are shy to say so, you can just meet, reach out to these guys. You have been with these guys for maybe almost seven years. They're your friends, like speak to them. So the final course is CG533. And that's environmental management. Of all the courses that your president has bestowed upon me, this is the only course I find interesting. I enjoy the class as a person. It's related to all these like SDGs and you know, like global stuff where the world is looking. And basically, that's some of my interest. So the class was interesting. Alaja tried, the doctor is Alaja or Dr. Mrs. Balogun. She tries to make the class entertaining. Alaja looks very, um, what's the word now? She, she can look very scary. But I mean, if you give her what she wants, she will not stress your life. Like if you come to a class early, if class is by 10, you are there by 9.59 or 10 or 10 or 1, she's fine. If you don't dress like you are going naked, like you don't put, maybe zip cap, I think she's not like cap, so you don't wake up to her class, wear shoes to her class, just look normal to go to her class. She can be look, she can be very stressful. And I, if you think so, I, I can agree with you, but if you give her what she wants, she will not stress your life. So that one, you attend classes, oh, if you are busy with work and you want to graduate, please attend Alaja's class. So why? Because her class is actually an interesting one. And she 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 gives notes beyond what is in her slides. So she give, she could give you a slide and still speak beyond the slide. And she will give you exams based on what is beyond the slide. So environmental management, CG533 by Alaja, go to your class. Be respectful of what you are doing. Um, yeah, so. You should read the slides. I think it had something to do with air pollution, noise pollution, stuff like that. You should read the slides. You should solve the past questions. But you know, Alaja now, she does not repeat past questions like, like that. She she will tweak some things, change some things, and so on and so forth. She tries to, Alaja tries to feel smart. So she probably divide divide the class into two sets and give you two different tests. She will do batch A and batch B. All this kind of stuff so you have to actually have an understanding of what's going on in the course it is not it is not hard trust me it's not hard um test might be bad though like niggas can get nine over 20 in the test or something like that <laughs> but read the material go to class i think if you go to class you'll be able to get an understanding so if you read your notes with the the, the notes of your if you read the slide with your personal notes i think you would understand the particular course that larger is taking you um, you should also maybe even discuss with your friend. Just think about it because the things that she's asking are like simple things. She would ask you maybe what causes deforestation in Nigeria or something like that. In class, she might just give you what causes deforestation in the world. And then she now spoke specifically about Nigeria. So she wants to hear specifically what's causing deforestation in Nigeria. And if you just give her a generic answer, she will not think you have done enough work. Um, but again, it's not hard. It's just uh, you have to be diligent in how you approach the particular course. She also gives um, assignment or 10 paper. So I have some advice for you regarding 10 paper. Justify your work. If you don't know what justifying your work means, let me just share my screen and, and show you what that means. Uh, okay, so can you see my screen? Chill, I'm yes, not... we can. Okay, you can see my screen. So there's this stuff here. 
this one I'm talking, I'm touching. Just that's justify. Like just do that when you're doing your work. So that everything is on the same line here. She wants to see that when you're submitting your assignment. If you don't do that, you can go and get five over ten in a in a ten people, which I don't think you want. Is my, sc is my screen still there? Yeah, it is. I removed it. All right. So another advice is whatever you are doing, she expects that by year five, you know how to reference. So reference properly when you are doing a larger assignment. Number your pages, page one, page two. Raji, um, justify is just that thing on Word. How do I explain thinking without going back? Yeah, Mustafa, can I just ask maybe um, Aisha or something? It's nothing complicated. It's just touching something on Word. Yeah, control J. I love you, Isaac. Not in that particular way, but in the way you understand. So number your pages, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. Just number your pages on Word. She wants to see that you are... When I say mature, you're not right doing assignment like you're in year two. Um, you should also put headings in your sections. I think I should share my, my screen again to show you how headings work. I have three minutes more. I think this is the last thing I'll just talk about before I bounce and I don't talk too much. So like this now, this is an introduction. This is heading two or something on my slide. And if you check the navigation pane of navigation pane is it control n or let me just control f but yeah i'm writing a book basically and these are the headings of the book preamble introduction chapter one chapter two basically that's what she wants to see like some form of professionalism that you are some form of professionalism that you're actually sectioning your work so that it's easier for somebody to read what you are doing so basically that's how you should go about the the um 10 people that she's going to give you and yeah that's pretty much it again i'll conclude with year five if you work hard you're likely to get good results you don't have to take my word for it you can ask only you can ask dummy you can ask general year five students i'm, not, I'm talking about people that know even on first class like people that are on tutu or third class people that were serious in year five they would find they will tell you that year five was actually simpler the document that was i'm writing is a book oh, i'm going to publish it and you go and buy it when it comes out, Isaac, it will not be expensive. Anyway, so that's all I have for you guys. Have a wonderful day. Barcelona is about to play match in 10 minutes, so I have to watch it. Adios. Oh, wait. Oh, thank ask, you. That's for question. You have... Yeah, yeah, I would say thank you so much, David. That was very, very, very enlightening. Ha, at least I'm, I'm slightly more relaxed about your fight because I was so tense thinking, oh, more, it might be the end of the world because everyone said, yeah, five is actually like the most difficult and all. So um, I, I think you've answered most of the questions that people dropped in the chat box, but I want to ask you one question. So what exactly is difficult about year five? Is it the fact that you have to be running your project alongside doing these courses? Um, because you said it's really easy. Okay, so let me, let me qualify that before I jump off. By easy, I mean easy in relation to results like i mean if you work hard you get you're likely to get results you would work hard in your five oh don't think you play around you work hard it's just how it is in school um the the issue with your five is you guys are older so you are less likely to feel the desire to work hard as you felt in year one year two year three when there was a lot of passion for many people they'll be like me school not waiting i won't use me i'll be take bro something like that so there's a high tendency that you don't want to put in the effort right that's the struggle you're actually fighting with the struggle of extracurriculars taking your time like second semester for instance you'll be doing final year week costume day um corporate day native day whatever day you do children in the week marry week more me week, 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 week all those things can quickly take your time and you not realize that wow two weeks to exam um but regarding effort, you will still work hard. Regarding project, again, it depends on your supervisor. But project usually takes a... My advice for you is to take your project seriously from the start. So you try to understand it very early and work at it. Um, but to be honest, it, for me, it was like I was doing eight courses or maybe 10 courses and one project. Like project took its own, was on a different sphere, like a different thing entirely from the remaining courses. That's how it was for me as a as a student. I don't know if it's the same for other people. Um, so you should take your your project seriously, like on a separate package. Go and meet your supervisor. 
showing me is chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. But to be fair, even if you don't take it seriously, they will still let you go. But just take it seriously, Sha. Just take it seriously so that you don't look too too lazy. Um, just do the, do the barest minimum. Don't do what is below the barest minimum. If in um, in first semester you're meant to submit chapter one, two, and three, have your chapter one, two, and three. Don't one week to defend. Now say you're still on chapter one. I beg. So you don't stress yourself. And you don't make your lecturer or your supervisor think you are very unserious. Regarding the work, you would work again or you would work hard. But my point is, if you work hard, you are more likely to get results. I've heard many students tell me that, more David, I work hard this semester. Or, ah, at the end, this man just give me C. Something where I read, 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 read. You just tell me one funny, funny reason why I no grade. I mean, if you are done a general budget course and you worked out for a general budget course, you understand what I'm saying. You can work so hard and just see a grade that ah, you see more. It's be this. In year five, it's not going to happen like that. Some courses there, like you, Akiji likes to give A. My father likes to give A. Elijah will still give you good grade if you do well. Dr. Deboje likes to give A. Like, you will just find it easier to move around with them in 500 level if you put in the effort. So please, don't forget to put in the effort. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, David. And um, someone else dropped another question. I think this will be the last question for you. It says, please, can you recommend the best electives to take? Or the mm -hmm. ones that most people got A in your set? The ones that most most people got is in everything in my set. I, I'm not sure you're here at the beginning, but um, for Rosemary, I said that I saw the first page of my my set's results for 500 level second semester, and on that first page, there were about 46 students on that page. About 28 of them on the first page, I couldn't see the second page. 28 of them had more than 4.5 semester GPAs. So most people did well in every course. There were courses that we laughed at people at, like people that did bridge design in second semester, Dr. Joko, a lot of calculation. But results were nice. The people that did um, Professor Ekomosa's elective, results were nice. If it's regarding results, they are fine. If it's regarding efforts, like you don't want to work hard at all, run away from Dr. Joko's courses because it will stress you to calculate and you may want to like take the easy way out. Um, I can't really give which one is the best. You have to choose by yourself. You have to actually sit down by yourself and look at what your interest is. I did everything in first semester, and I did like maybe two out of three in second semester, and I didn't need to, but I found them interesting and I did them. You may know you don't, of course, you don't have to do them. Do what you need to graduate. Check your broadsheet and rather check your academic profile and see the news you, you require to graduate and ensure you meet that. Also, you can follow the crowd though. I know, like, because I was one of the best students in my class, so if I select the course, Many people are likely to select that course because David would give us tutorial for that particular course. You may do that to just ask yourself, you see what they do. You see, go tell you, and you do this course. Everybody go do the same course, you see they do. Like, you can use any strategy you want. But if it's regarding results, there were courses where there was no first class student that was doing it. They still had good grades, basically. That's what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, David. Which course is Dr. Joko taking, by the way? Okay, in first semester, it's taking structure and analysis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Compulsory. That one you can't ah. run away from it. It's compulsory. Second semester, it's taking bridge design. It's not compulsory. I think you have somebody, maybe Dami, to tell you about structure analysis. Ah, you will work hard yeah. that structure analysis. <laughs> but Dami will tell you more about it. It is well. Thank you very much, David. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We've gained a lot right. from, this, from your session. Ah. So now I would. Bye, guys. My pleasure. <laughs> bye bye. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the second speaker, another interesting personality. We have Dami Lola Sulaiman. Dami, thank you so much for joining us. You have the floor. Good evening. Thank you very much, Aisha. I'm sorry I joined the meeting late. Um, so I'll be talking about CG514, but first of all, before I start, um, how have you guys been? And I hope you guys are preparing for, um, the session. No, you don't have to be scared. It's going to go well. Actually, we did our time, so it's your time to do it too. 
So moving on, I'll be talking about foundation engineering. Um, the lecturer for this course is um, Dr. Adedoku. Yeah, this course is actually an easy one because we didn't really have a problem with it in the sense that it makes more sense because it, it, um, it is whatever it gives you in class that it brings to his test or the exam. So I think what the problem is going to be is if you don't practice what you are given in class or if you don't practice a course you are supposed to practice on. So I think that's like the key word, practice. So I'm going with what David said the first time, always time yourself, practice. Well, different things work for different people. As for me, what works for me is that um, I just practice, I keep practicing. So most times, to be honest, I don't time myself. But I find out that um, as um, the more I practice, um, I have less time to do this thing. It takes me less time to do this thing. So sometimes I just practice. I, I'm just practicing on my own. Then I realize what I do in 10 minutes before, I now do it in five minutes. So that's just, we commit yourself to it, to something and you keep doing it. If I'm, um, if I'm to remember, I think like the main topics we were really concerned about it was like, um, slope stability, um, sheet piles and retaining wall. To be honest, to be honest, um, we didn't finish. I don't think anybody finished the exam. And I, I remembered the day of the exam. I panicked and uh, I made a lot of mistakes. And, but I still had A anyways. But it, we are liable to make mistakes in this course, foundation engineering, because it's a very, very long calculation. Retaining wall, I, I, I remember and David talking about it that time that you're not going to finish this exam. And literally, I didn't finish it because it was too long and I was actually panicking. And one thing I, I would like you to learn is, please, during exams, do not panic. It's kind of affected me in a way. Though God came through, I passed I had an A in the course, but I was really, really scared. And I made a lot of mistakes when I was making my, doing my calculations. So for foundation engineering, you... Just keep practicing whenever it comes to class. And I'm very, I say this, you, uh, we, um, we have different people. Some people come to class and they just grab what the lecturer says and that's what they use. Some people um, don't need to come to class. You just need to tell them, oh, this is what the lecturer taught us and they are good to go. Well, for me, I have to be in class. Though I read on my own most times too, but... I also have to be in class and listen to what the lecturer says. So that has helped me a lot. And that's what I did during my time. So for foundation engineering, I always, um, the demand does this calculation, but most of the calculation, now that's where, that's where um, reading and understanding comes in. You know, when we are giving questions to solve and you just see that demand writes it there, you don't know it got the answer. You have to meet people that understand it to explain to you. So I think I like that about your set because you guys are always taking tutorials. Um, you guys explain things to yourself, and I really like that about you guys. So I think it's going to be easy for you to get most of this course because you are going to explain to yourself. So for foundation engineering, I think you should practice more, um, attend classes. He's not really um, an attendance person. Nah, he does not even care if you come to class. All he wants is he, he just wants to see people in class. He takes his class. He's going to repeat everything he writes in his notes. Like it's literally the, if it's one plus one that is there, we just be saying it. But it's not. It's not. It doesn't mean it's like a lacram la poor person. To him, he understands what he's saying. But we, as a student, we actually need more explanation because we are all different. Some people might grab it once, and some people might just. And the man gets frustrated easily. I don't know how to put that in words. It's just like. He's, you cannot just ask him questions sometimes. It will just, like, he, I don't know if to say ignore you, but if he does not have answers to your question, he might even give you an answer that you don't really want. So I think practicing more, read past questions, read past, just keep solving questions. So you can, you can solve a question like 10 times, just get, get used to it, especially retaining work. The simplest one is stability because it's just like a short calculation you're going to do for that. And when you get to retaining wall, there are a lot of things to do. You are designing the whole retaining wall and you are taking some things into consideration. And that's going to take a lot of time. So then sheet power. Sheet power is also like a very long um, calculation too. But all these things are now, and when you are choosing your question, you have to choose wisely. So 
I won't say when you want to read this slide or you want to read this notes, you read one part and you don't read one part. I think what works for people, please read everything so that when you get to the exam or you'll be able to pick the one you want to answer. I think that works because retaining what is a very long calculation, sheet powers is a very long calculation. Now imagine you have like maybe um, 45 minutes or one hour to do it, um, an exam and retaining what is taking like almost more than 30 minutes and we have to answer like four questions. So I think one thing you need to do is um, choose wisely in your exam. So you have to like read randomly, practice everything randomly so you understand everything and you know the one to choose. Because I assure you there are some that are very short calculations. But because, okay, I didn't read it. I have to go and don't do this. Oh, I too know. I want to do shit about because I know it all. Please just do the one because if you, if you do, if you start your shit pass and you make your, and you make mistakes, this man will mark you down. No matter, I don't know, he's going, just going to, you, you failed it, you failed it. So try to do your um, workings correctly and um, also keep practicing. I think that's what I'm going to say on foundation engineering. Then uh, moving on to um, CG531, that's um, structure analysis. Wow. I'll say um, this course... First time we started, when we started it, I was scared because I w the man wrote down the course outline and I was like, what is all this? Like, I've never seen this in my life. Like, we were doing it by eight matrix. And I'm very sure you guys heard about it, year five. You guys are going to experience it anyways. Because it was, it was just a lot. I didn't imagine myself knowing that course because I already looked down and said that there's nothing you can do. You cannot know it. Because it was just scary. It was very, very scary. But the good thing about it is, I don't know if you guys, um, um, you've maybe seen Dr. Ojoko before. You should know him if you know the way he talks. This man doesn't, talk, he, he, he talks like as if he doesn't want you to hear what he's saying. That's what he does. So imagine someone that does that, comes to the class and trying to teach you a course you don't even understand, you don't know anything about you know, you should. I don't know. You, you, I think you should know how it feels. You get, you get frustrated. You get, you feel sleepy. So some people sleep in this class. But the problem was that this course was a very compulsory course for us, and we had to do it. I'm very sure if we could drop the course, most people would drop it. That's why during the time we started bridge design, not everybody did the course because immediately they heard it was Doctor Ojuko, they left it. Even people that were interested in bridges, they had to leave it because they could not. They could not handle the fact that the man doesn't talk well in class. And he, did, he doesn't say anything bad about it. He tells us that's the way he was created and we cannot change him. So imagine someone that has that belief. He's just, he's, he just does it in his own way. But the good thing about this man is, um, it's not just the man. I think it's we as a student. When he, whenever a lecturer teaches you in class, you pay, um, you pay attention. Something about structural analysis. I, 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 I will say this again. I didn't have to read a lot of textbook for this course. Okay, when we started, I, 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 because I was lost, I was scared, I started getting textbook to read for the course because I didn't know what was going to happen. I was just panicking anyways. But at the end of the day, at the end of the course, I didn't actually need a textbook because he clearly explained everything. Though he wasn't talking loud, so you have to like pay attention to his, um, whenever he's teaching. I, th I think that's the key pay attention to him whenever he's teaching. He likes, he actually likes teaching. He wants you to know because he gets frustrated if you don't know it. Imagine someone that is talking and you, do, you can't hear him and he still wants you to understand what he's teaching. In his mind, he's putting effort, but we, we are not seeing the effort anyways. So what he does is take notes in his class, write everything he says, take notes in his class. When he's solving questions, solve questions with him. When he tells you to press your calculator, press your calculator, calculator with him. I think all this thing works because it makes you remember some things. So as for me, the way it helps me is that when I, whenever I'm practicing everything he teaches us in class or whatever he has taught us in class, I try to remember everything, like visualize everything I did in class. And at the end of the day, I get whatever um, he has taught us. So I think that was what I used doing structural analysis because at a point in time, we all had to help ourselves. Because nobody really understand understand anything in the course, and it was it got so frustrating at a point in time. So um, for structural analysis, you just have to um, practice also, keep practicing because especially when you because when you start, you still be doing um, 
your normal bending trust in your mind you feel okay it's chill now but when you get to flexibility and um stiffness method that is when you know what is going on like at that point we were lost i well, I, I had people that came to me i was like that was going on because myself, i just told them that <laughs> at this point there's nothing you can do we just, just practice keep practicing but the thing is if you get how to do this calculation and if you know where to do this calculation you know what to do i think the thing is knowing what to do when you know what you want to calculate it, it just gets easier so i think i would say again keep practicing when it comes to all these courses because if you don't practice if you don't practice <laughs> i assure you it's is 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 hard to learn but when you know it and you don't practice it's easy to forget that's just something about all these courses, especially this calculation course. Because I remember I started learning it, then we went on strike. And I came back, um, I think after like six months, I, don't, I can't remember. But I knew at that six months when, we, when I came back, I did not know anything. In my mind, I was like, I didn't know if it was my notes because I didn't know what it was. And I was just looking at it, like, did I really do this? Did I write? I was discussing with my friends. Like, I had to go and meet someone I thought. That one who said he does not know it. I was like, ha, what, what's going on? Like, we didn't, we didn't know what was going on. Not until the man came to class again. Good thing he, revi- he used to revise with us. And he gives us um, AOC, actually. When it comes to being nice, the man is a nice man. He literally wants you guys to, he wants us to pass. But the only problem we have with him, with him is the way he talks. And he does not care if you hear or not. But he gets angry when you are not paying attention. Imagine someone that is tired in class, like you've been he's just ranting. Like at the point in time, I just would just be looking at the board and like, what's this man doing? Like it was it was just not making sense. It, it didn't make sense later. It didn't make sense. But practicing, practicing, practice, as I have said, write your notes. Just write your notes. Understand the notes. So um, I think I still have some of the notes, and I may share it with some people. Uh, I still have contacts with some people that may ask me, so I'll share it with them. But it doesn't matter. Just keep practicing. And I will tell you, you know, I know some people in your class that are scholars. Those don't want to carry this book. But I'm sorry to tell you, I was like that too. And I did not carry this book for this course because it, 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 it didn't matter for me. All these things, it it was just I didn't need to because at the point they were like, ah, me, I'm wasting my time. Other people are reading ahead, and me, I'm here understand what they said in textbook. I beg, I just went, I just started reading what it talks about, going through my notes. Now I think I don't know if it works for anybody, but I I love writing my notes because it makes me understand more. So when I write my notes, I tend to know what I'm doing. So writing my notes always, um, always um. It, it makes me understand more things, sure. So that's why I love writing my notes anyways. Then, um, apart from that, structural analysis is not really an art course, but it just takes time. I remember doing our exam. I don't, I don't think everybody knows the gist about our structural analysis exam. We literally used, I can't have a number of exam sheets I used, and I did not finish. I did not still finish. Like, I had my friend beside me, and I was like, it was like, I think, but I didn't know what I was writing. I was just writing that, okay, well, let me just write and finish. Because, but still, I didn't finish. Even the man gave us extra time, but we didn't finish. But God, God, I think we had the, like, the best um, results so far. The man said it because our results were very, very good for structural analysis. And he didn't expect it because in his mind, he literally told us that people fail this course. But we shock him now. We, we actually passed the course. And um, practice, keep practicing. And please, take tutorials. Please, people that are scholars in your class should just reach out and call everybody, teach them. Because this thing is not easy. If I bet you, if no, if someone in your class does not know this thing, or if there are people in your class that don't know it, and you don't explain to them, I'm I'm sorry to say this, they don't, they can't know it. It's just it's just a fact. Because if you don't practice for structural analysis, guy, the exam will come. You think you've not read anything because it comes in different. It comes in different. It's the same question, but when you see it, you look. It will, it will look like as if you've not done anything. It will look like as if you've not. Nobody. It will look like as if you've not. You don't know. You don't know what you are doing. So, structural analysis, please practice well. Practice well, and um, yeah, that's it for structure. And then the last course is embankment. Well, um, 
for this course, wow, okay. Well, I didn't have a problem with this course. It was mostly cramming and understanding because I did it. I did this course. Um, that's um, Doctor Ugudalu. Yeah, I think so. So for his course, well, it was just cramming. Actually, it was cramming, and the fact that he gave us AOC, he literally told us what was going to come out. And for someone like me that don't like stress, I just read what was going to come out. And I wrote my exams, I wrote my tests, and it was good. But from what I heard, because I didn't do his course um, second semester, I wasn't just interested, it was tunnel, and I was not interested in it. He actually changed the way he did his thing and was like, because people pass the embankment, so they think they can now pass tunnel. So he, he changed some things, but people still passed. But it was kind of different from embankment. So I can't really say, but for my talking from my embankment experience, if that the same thing is going to do with you guys, it's it's just a chilled person. Read his notes. Now I um I think I learned something. When it um well I didn't learn it directly, it was a friend of mine that did tunnel that learned it. When you do a course or when they give you AOC for a course, okay, what really happened with her was um what really happened with her was she was reading like a normal, okay, let me just read everything this man has taught us. Then the man gave them um, AOC, gave them questions that were going to come out in the test. Then she she didn't stop reading. She didn't stop reading. She continued reading. Then she added everything the man, you know, said they should read. She went for the test. And what happened was, it was what she read that came out. What the man gave did not come out. Can you imagine? And Imagine she had stopped reading. I was like, oh, let me just concentrate. To be honest, to be honest, though, even if it was me, I would stop reading my book and go and read what the man gave us. But she didn't stop. She read her own and she read what the man gave them. And it was what she read for herself that came out. And what the man gave them did not come out. So I think, I don't, I'm not saying we should not trust our lecturers anyways. Because there are some of them that tell tell us, okay, this is what they are doing, and that's what they are going to do. And there are some that are just, I don't know what to call them, but I don't know. Maybe they just they are just sadists, and they want you guys, to, want people to fail. So it's they just if they give you um AOC, so someone I trust when it comes to AOCs. Um, this guy has talked about him. I am what's his name? Um, this guy um trans um. Oh, was it? Um, I think this guy talked about it already. I can't remember his name anyways. So, but there's, there are some lecturers, as I've said, they give you, um, it's not at the budget, the second guy, this guy that likes talking, I try everybody, Aki J, yes, Aki J, thank you very much, Chika. Aki J, yes. Aki J, when he tells you this is what's going to come out, that's exactly what will come out. So I don't have a problem with him, but there are some lecturers that do this. And they are like, oh, this is going to come out. You just don't give me AOC. That's why I actually like Ikonsa. Ikonsa will tell you to read everything. He was not going to give you AOC. So if you like, read what you want. He still wants. He will just tell you to read everything. So you can't put a blame on on him or anything. So um. But um. Anyways, um, for everything, they're actually sweet courses and they're actually chilling courses. To be honest, for. I actually enjoy structural analysis best because it really challenged me and it challenged my brain. And I was like, I, at the point I was feeling, I was feeling like as if I was smart. But because, to be honest, I'm not saying maybe because I was feeling that way because I was there. When you get there, when you see yourself doing eight by eight matrix, you, you, in your mind, you think you are smart. No, you just have that confidence from nowhere. Like, okay, what people are using calculator to solve? I'm used, solving it from my head, you know, things like that. It just, I think it just happens that way because you just get overwhelmed or something. But all in all, they are all chilling cause, and I've said before, there's no calculator, my brother. You, you are going, there's no calculator for this, but you're going to do it yourself. You do the calculation yourself. You do all these things yourself. So, yeah, and to answer um, um, Yusuf's question, how important is Ogudalu's class? Some people didn't do it. Yeah. Is it um is it, um is an elective course? It's an elective course. So so you can decide not to do it, you can decide to do it. But I actually did all the courses during first semester because I didn't want to do a lot of course in second semester 
because I wanted to chill. So I could drop some courses during my second um, semester. Attending his classes, it looks like he takes attendance, but he's not serious with it. That's just the kind of person he is. It looks like he takes attendance. He takes attendance, yes, but he's not serious with it. So if you don't go for his class, I would advise you go. If you don't go for his class, it's not a problem. But if you go, it's, uh, it's not really a plus. So, well, I mean, the, I think urban and embankment were elective, yes. Urban and embankment were elective. But I had to, I did everything because I wanted to chill my second semester. So, and that was like exactly what happened. I didn't do all my courses. Then I... Then I... Um, I did um, lead to when um, during my second semester um, period. So, yeah. So, second, I can't remember for second semester anyways, but first, first semester, you can do everything, then chill when you get second semester. Then, well, I think it was like a um, lucky thing for um, people that came in with JAM and direct, it was like an issue with JAM guys and direct um, people that came in with, um, what's the name? the other guys, direct entry or whatever. So, but I actually did everything during my first semester and um, you can check your um, profile for your number of units and all, but 21 units, yes. I did 21 units in first semester. But I can't remember how many units I did in second semester. I think 13 or 12, 13 or 12, 12 or 31 or 2. So, so, well, you can do this. Also, I would advise everything you are doing, do not let your, um, well, for me, I start reading, like, from the beginning of the semester. It just works for me that way because I'm a very, no, I won't say I'm a slow learner. I'm not a slow learner, but I like preparing myself for the worst. I would just use that word. I like preparing myself for the worst. So when I like to read, so that when the worst comes, it's not going to be like a, a, a burden on me. Because imagine I've not been reading then and I find out that there's something that can even destroy my life or there's something that a cause that is there that I may not understand fast. I will have more time to concentrate on that. Imagine I'm not started reading. It's going to be like, God, it's going to be like a lot for me. So all these things are things I take into consideration when I'm studying or when I'm doing anything. Um, yeah. So your projects, your courses, your everything, everything you are doing. But as David said, see your supervisor. Do your just do your project as a separate thing. It's like it's it's not your project is not your it's not like I don't see it as my reason. When, during my time, I didn't see my project as a big deal as like something I was I was really bothered about because I wasn't thinking about it. <laughs> All I was thinking about was my results and to be honest, year five was actually very chilling for us. Very, very. That's if you pay more attention, if you write your notes, if you attend classes, if you do all this necessary stuff. Year five was a very chilling year for us. We, I, I think we had most of the um, 5.0s. We had 4.9 stuff, 4.95, 4. People passed. People really passed during this period. So I think you guys can do it too. So I hope I've not exhausted my time. And if you have questions to ask, please ask. I'm presently at work and I just have to take excuse from them. But if there's any question you have, um, you can ask. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dami. We really appreciate your presence. Ah, thank you so much. Like I'm even feeling more relaxed and I am just maybe anticipating structure analysis. It's actually so a good means- course, the nice course, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I'm just going to ask some of the questions that I made in the chat box. So someone okay. asked a question when you were talking about foundation engineering. Okay. It says, how many questions are we to answer in the exam? And how many do we need to answer to get A? Well, um, I think you have to answer four or five. I don't want to guess, but let me say the maximum on five. I guess. I think seven, you answer five. Then, uh, unfortunately, we have questions that are longer than the other. 
do you understand? But they are the same marks for everything. So if you are doing slope stability, there's a mark for you. See, you say 25 marks. If you are doing retaining words, also 25 marks. Cheat power is also 25 marks. Every other topic you are doing, I can only remember these three, but there are also other ones that are very, very short. But they have theories in them. Do you understand? I think there's a lateral force question. Yeah, they have theories in them. So my sets, I didn't really bother myself with theories, to be honest, because I'm not, I'm not really a theory person. I don't really like it. I prefer calculations. So as I said before, with any one sheet files, are very, very long questions to solve. And it takes a very, very fast question. And it's someone that has practiced to be able to finish this. So if you can do four successfully, you do a retaining wall question, you do a, um, a stop um, stability question, you do like um, this lateral force, or is it five foundation? There's something that is also short. You do that one, and you do like a theory. You won't have a problem with it. You you should have your A. To be honest, I didn't finish my own. I did retaining wall. I did shit, but I did slope stability. I did slope stability. Then I didn't do the other ones. And I don't think I did. Um, um, I didn't really do. Um, I didn't do theory courses. But another thing I'm supposed to say is your test. Make sure you have a good mark in your test. That really counts. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person of doing well in my test. So having like 35 over 40, 30, minimum of 30 over 40, you know, except if we didn't practice or I didn't read maybe 25 or this day. So I know I'm going to practice more for my exam. But to make things easier for us, let's try to work on our test. So if you have 35 over 40 in your test, how many marks do you need to have 70 again? If you have 35 in your exam, in your exam or you have 40 in your exam, you are good to go, to be honest. So if you do your retaining wall, you do your um, slope, slope, slope stability. And even if you end up doing a sheet pile question, that means you're answering just three questions. I bet you are good to go. Just go, just go and rest. If your test is good. If your test is good. So make sure your test is good. Because in test, it, it could give you slope stability. Yeah, you give us slope stability and sheet spells for test. Look at him. You give us slope stability and sheet spells for test. Just make sure your test is very good. That's why I keep saying practice. When you practice this thing, it gets easier. Because because sometimes say, if you just look at the question and you just see you just see that. You just see that you are done with it. So um you can answer three questions as well and just know that you are going to you are going to have your A if your test is okay. Do you understand me? Okay, thank you very much, Sammy. Then um, the next question is on that structural analysis. He says, um, how does he grade the test and exam? Well, um, for structural analysis, I can't, the thing is, <laughs> during our exam, it was funny. During our test, sorry, it was very, very funny because what you call max steps, you can't make mistakes. If you make a mistake in the course course, it's, it's a problem already. So you have to be careful when you're working with him. So in math steps, sorry, hold on, please. Um, about that, in math um, steps, and if you look at the way he maths, you actually be angry. You know, it does give you one half. One half, one half, one half, five marks, two marks. That's the way you marks. But he wants to now. What I do when I'm playing this is I don't skip any any um step in his in his um course. I don't skip um skip steps because skipping steps means you are losing marks. So if you don't skip steps, if you don't skip um skip steps, you are going to get more marks. Just make sure you do everything it gives you to do in class. Do everything and um, don't make mistakes. Try not to make mistakes, please. That's just what it is. It marks steps and it just it just marks the way it is. I think it's a person of handwriting self. If he does not see what you're writing self, if he if he can't see everything. So just write well and um, don't skip the steps. Yeah, that's okay. the one. 
structure analysis. Structure analysis. Thank you very much. I want to just confirm: is the test over forty? Yeah, no, it's test was over fifty. Ah. I can't remember. I think yeah, it was over fifty. Yeah, people pass the test too. People start having forty-eight, forty. Ah uh-uh. ah. Even me that I don't know anything. Me that I don't know anything. I had forty-six. Can you imagine? But it's right. it, people people passed the test actually. It was very easy. So the exam was easy. We just followed. We just kept okay. So we just um followed that trend that we just we just need to um, finish up that Okay, yeah. then I have another question here. For foundation, do we need to have text? Because I remember the other foundation we did, Dr. Bati provided like some slides for us, so we didn't even use any textbook. So do we need textbook for this foundation? Um, did you do retaining word during about this time? We did retaining word, but I don't think okay, it's the way you good. guys did it. Well, that was a plus for us, anyways, because we did retain what we're doing about this time. It was easy for us doing Adi Dokun. There's no, there's no difference between a re- retaining what Adi Dokun taught you and um, Adi Dokun is going to teach you and the one about it taught you. It's actually it's the same thing when it comes to design. But I didn't see. It, it, it's the same thing when it comes to design. But um, and Adi Dokun is not the type that oh you have to do what I write. Or anything, just understand the concept of you can use decide to use textbook for it, but I just see that um, there's no need, but not to discourage people or not to discourage you guys. You can use textbook to understand more, but when you see that you've understood, just keep solving his questions, keep solving his past questions, keep solving, just keep solving shit files. You might not. So shit piles, you might just use his notes. Now, as I said, keep attend this class, so you won't miss anything. When you attend this class and you understand what he's doing, you won't miss anything. Like it will be very, it will be, it will get very easy for you. So attending this class will also help. So I think that was it. Help me. I didn't need Facebook for all these things. But if you are this, the kind, you know, I, I said it before. We have some scholars in your class that need. I always want to use this book. I won't mention names, but they are my bosses. You, they, you might have to use this book, but mm, I don't, I'm just saying it's not compulsory, but it might be necessary. Let me just use that word. All right. Um. So, sorry. What what textbook would one use? Which one would you use the textbook? What did you say? What textbook? Uh, use, like, you you use, uh, there's Aurora, there's um, this Geotech. Okay. All the textbooks you use for um, Obadi is the same textbook you use. All right, thank you. And also, does he repeat past question for foundation engineering? Does he do what? Repeat past question. You, you are going to find this past question everywhere. That's it. The back, you get it. So everything you see in that past question, the only thing um, I did not change is it's just the values. It's just values it changes. It does not change anything. Is that right. what happens? Yeah. Let me turn it up. Thank you. So, um, yeah, yes. is that all for now? Yes. Thank you very all right. much. Um, really yeah. You're welcome. Thank you very much for um, inviting me. God bless you. So I'll be leaving you guys. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. I hope I hope we are preparing. So it is my pleasure to introduce our final speaker for the evening, who also happens to be the former president of Nicesa Unilag, Ade Kunle Lawal. So, Kunle, thank you very much for joining us. You have the floor. Um, thank you, guys, uh, for having me. Um, first, I want to say um, big ups to the new executive. You guys are doing really, really great work. Um, i for you guys, 100%. And um, congrats to you guys on being in your final, <laughs> final year. Right, you guys are the last leg of the tour, so enjoy it. 
and have the best best final year you can have sure best year you can have yet um so the guys have spoken before me this this, this guy spoke a lot they did, they did a, lot of, a lot of good um judgment to their courses so i wish i could take a different approach because i don't like the way they just spoke 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 and you guys were as, asking questions at the end i wish you could make it much more interactive but um since i just have to speak about the courses first and take questions after i can't really break the system so the first one i would like to talk on is projects because i feel that's like the crux of your final year how you do your projects um, I don't think you guys have been assigned to um, um, supervisors yet, but no matter the supervisor you are attached with at the end of the day, I think the the main thing about your project is when you are being assigned to someone and say you've dropped a topic or you've been given a topic, if you don't understand the topic or you don't you don't you don't think you can do it you get or the money is too much or something just talk immediately tell the person or tell the lecturer that's in charge of like um assigning you people um, students to supervisors that more can i please change my supervisor you can do that you can ask for Oh, I'm much more interested in structural engineering, much more interested in geotech or what, whatsoever the departments might be. You can ask. So ask for a change first, because it's very important that you get it right at first before you continue going, before you continue the whole practical or experiment or review process, because it gets tough to get going, going along, because doing projects is not something we are so used to like that, reading literature, um, literature, reading literatures and making reports is not something we are that used to. Yeah, so at least let it be something you want to do so that you don't start and you now start regretting at the end. Um, no matter the person you are assigned to, I mean, you can be in structures, you can be in water, you can be in, I know some people want to know um, the chilling, <laughs> chilling supervisor you can be under or whatsoever right i think the remedy to actually finishing well in your projects is to start a um mentioned earlier that one of the problems in year five is that we feel because we're in year five we have the big boys and the big girls facts you've been in that school for like you've been in that school for like seven years right so you're a big boy <laughs> if, you did, if, you, if you came in without beards and now there's no way you don't have beards except you are misha because <laughs> I do still have, right? But yeah, big boy, long story short. <laughs> and you want to relax. You want to probably have a um, job you are doing, right? You have something you're working on. And you want to just have that time for yourself. Year five is that time you feel you should do that. But if your project should lag, it would, it would mean it's actually going to stress you out a lot because no matter what the lecturer is, if the lecturer is stressful or not, the fact that you are not putting in work in your projects would actually cause a lot of embarrassment for you. Talk less of reducing your grades because they will talk bad about you. They just treat you anyhow. Yeah, so please start any, no matter the lecture you're working with. If it's Akij that used to stress because Akij stresses a lot, yes, just start any. I remember a scenario where Akij students had to, they thought maybe they didn't care about their work. And just at the end of everything, he started scrutinizing chapter one to five all over again. And they had to spend extra two weeks after we had everybody had submitted just the editing and reality project. So please start early. Pick something you're interested in and start early. You guys get so that's that part. Um for the projects, I think I, I really can't think too far as to um what else I need to cover, but I would I appreciate your questions. I feel that's when I I think I've delivered answering your questions is actually to do more good to you guys than just talking and talking and talking. Um yes, there's structures, there's water, there is environmental, there is geotechnical, 
Yes, I think those are the ones. There's truck and there's transport, transport and traffic kind of get together. So yeah, there's materials under structures. So you could have structures where you are just maybe doing design of a high rise building or something, or structures where you are doing lab work, right? Yeah, just there are just two kind of structures you can travel. So that's that about major league projects. Um so I'm going to move to my next subject, which is ECN. Okay, before I, before I do projects, before I do projects, just to cover it in entirety. Um you guys are going to make do your project defense now. You do your your, your project is split into two. So you have the first part in first semester, second part in second semester. You do the defense of your chapter one to three. Your chapter one is the introduction, gives an introduction on the project. Chapter two is literature review. What's literature review? Literature review is um you have a particular topic. Let's say the topic is the design of high rise building, right? Your literature review, your chapter two is basically looking for different papers that many people have written in the past around your topic, around high rise buildings, writing it out, saying whatever they did, then stating why your own um, research projects is adding more value giving justification to your projects because every project must have a reason why they are doing it. You can't just do a project. Uh, you can't be doing a particular project without having a core reason why you are you are doing it. And if someone has done the project before, it doesn't really make so much sense to you. So it's must, your literature review must speak to the reason why you are actually doing it because other people have done it before, you're making it better. In what area are you making it better? In your chapter three, what's the chapter three? Introduction that literature review. I've kind of like forgotten. Chapter three is like materials, something on math methodology, good methodology. So the, me the method in which you are carrying out your projects, if it's an experiment kind of thing, you have to mention your processes, how you the material testing, the experiments you're carrying out. If it is coding softwares you are using, how you're going about it. If it's design, the software you're using in designing, the architectural models, um, the design models, whatever it is, you get, it's simple. You guys can always get um, my reports, my, my projects from, I can only send you my projects, you get, just send it to you guys to use. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say my project is 100% good, sharp, or like, when you guys are in when you guys are in my shoes, what that in the shoes I was back then you understand why we had to rush some things so I said I don't want to talk too much on projects, I'll wait for your, for your questions. And at the end of the day, you guys will make a presentation. Yeah, you make a presentation on chapter one to three to the lecturers and you grade you. And yeah, you move on to the next semester. So ECN. ECN is a borrowed course from um I think these are those management sciences or something, yes, management sciences. And I think I like the fact that I'm talking about ECN because I had a D in ECN. <laughs> I had a D in ECN. So it's having a D in that course is a striking, a striking thoughts, a striking memory because it made me remember why I didn't do well in that course. It made me remember why I didn't do well in that course and put me in a very good place to talk about it. ECN was seen like the GST of all courses. Of, of courses um, in our final year, amongst everyone of us. We did attend the class. Aside in my department, I think it was only David that attended that class. That we probably attended a few times. Me being the classroom and president at the same time, I wouldn't even say because I was the classroom and president. I just followed the crowd. Um, well, these guys were not attending. So it means everybody everybody is also um, thinking of using past question now <laughs> so i'll just follow the crowd i will use past questions too so the rumor started going around that the lecturers were saying um they are changing the course content i was like <laughs> are you guys playing <laughs> yeah so that's it and i went to a class a couple times but more i can't i don't even remember going to that class but i'm twice i wouldn't say it was not going to the class that actually cost it because some other people that exams. I didn't go to that class and they, they had peace to get. So I think what happened with me was my, my plan didn't work. 
I was supposed to be reading this year for like I think maybe three days to the exam. Did you get as a normal GSE course that I saw it? But I, I actually didn't read it. I was lazy about it because I thought maybe I can do it one night, one full night to the exam. So people can hear can still probably pull that off. I'm not advising it to do it because the context of ECN is economics and they give you a lot of formulas. They give you a lot of formulas. The formulas are like simple interest, compound interest formulas, but like there are different formulas for different scenarios, and you need to know those. You need to be able to identify the scenarios to use the particular formula you are using. So, giving me that I didn't read before my exam, right? I remember dozing off while reading for that particular course. I was seeing some questions and I was thinking to myself, let me just let me just talk it out, Sabi. I talked it out. I will see, I will see a particular answer that is like, oh, it's just fifty below this particular option, fifty below D. And I will pick it as my answer. Everyone had two people in the exam where they were looking up to me, thinking, I'm a cool day, you know, if you feel. <laughs> and they also said I had a D. Chicken, so, yeah, please, ECN, don't joke with it. You can probably, like, maybe not take it serious up until the test. Now, yes, there's no test. It is over 100. You are doing everything in the exam. So the way those guys did it was, our exam score was halved. The exam score of 100 was halved. Then they used it as our test. They now added it to the exam score. So that's how they got the overall score. So there's no test. So everything is in your exam score. So if you can have 70 in exam, right? I don't know. They probably half it, half it more way. They give you 17 over 20 in test. They find one way or another to bring down your um, um, exam score. One way or another, sir, A will come out if you do well in the exam. If you do, if you have an A grade in the exam, do you understand? The market system was not clear to everybody, but we knew that we didn't have a test. And and we had when we saw the results, we had a test coming. So they used something, they didn't use attendance either. When people barely went for that class. She gets and people that didn't go for that class had is so she gets do well, please read it. Read it well and try to pass. You get so that it doesn't people that are on the edge, it won't bring down your score. Do you understand? So that's what I can say about this year. If you want to start the class, that's fine. But just know that you have to. Um, the last course I'm covering is um, what's it called? Um, surface water hydrology. Surface water hydrology. So I don't know how surface water hydrology is going to be this semester because. The department used to pay an external lecturer to come and teach the course. The man is, is um, a working class guy who works in local states. And um, he barely has the time to come through the week to come and teach. So he used to come on weekends or Saturdays. I'm forgetting his name now, right? So the man is a. Okay. The man is a Babalai. <laughs> For those that speak your word, understand he's a chief, right? He relaxes himself, he doesn't stress. He doesn't teach in lectures. Like, what do I mean by that? He doesn't try to explain what is in his notes. He just uploads the note on um, PowerPoint or whatever, and he just reads through. The same thing that is in the notes. And the guy, yeah, it's self explanatory. It's just explanatory. You guys can do this and do that, do this and do that. It doesn't teach chickens. So surface water hydrology is just something you will learn by yourself. You make I doubt. I doubt. Sorry, sorry guys. Um why did I this by my side? Uh so you guys will definitely have to re learn by yourself. That's first. Learn by yourself. Read surface water hydrology. The course is bulky. He is going to be reluctant to give you guys AOC. It's going to be reluctant to give you AOC. So I don't know how you're gonna go about it. But because I actually don't know how I got an A in the course. I just did what I did. I don't know. I'm not like these scholars that have a strategy or something. I just do all the blocks. I just do whatever I can do. I just do whatever I can do. But I know that you have to read. At least the surface water hydrology is about rain, water, and um, precipitation. Those are the topics. Precipitation, 
um, hydration, um, some infiltration. He was just talking about hydrological circle of water. So it's just hydrological circle of water that he broke down into one course and we took it for a whole semester. And I don't know how the man the man did that and made the course very bulky, but he did. Then he also gave us a lot of assignments. He gave us a lot of 10 people, right? 10 people that, me being the classroom, I remember him not marking because he asked me to send it to his house in Abel Kuta. And somewhere along the line, those people didn't get to him because he kept oh, calling me to I tell, did not look your way. Sorry, thank you. He kept telling he kept calling me to tell me that ah, I don't I didn't get your your mail. I didn't you didn't send the papers to me. Your guys will fail, your guys will fail. Bah, he didn't fail. So um he will give you a lot of assignments. Class rep, whoever your class rep should be, please should please make sure you're always calling him. Calling him to remind him of your weekend classes if he's going to set it like that. Calling him if he's going to come for weekly class, so please don't don't joke with the man. He can be put to everyone's I remember him. I remember people the year before was telling us that he legit removed ten, legit removed ten marks from he marked their work over ninety. He marked their work over ninety. He didn't mark it over hundred. Uh, I said I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> I've been boring, you, boring you guys. So that's what I can vividly remember about surface water hydrology. Um, it's about to break, and I'm just leaving the bus. So I think I'm going to up off. I think time is about up. Um, please ask me as much question as you can. Um, I'll be expecting your questions on my way home. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, for me. Thank you so much for that. So while you were speaking, we got some questions in the chat box. Um, I think we'll start with the um, project question. So someone asked, which field is the cheapest for projects? Because everybody's talking about projects and money. So which one, like what's the average cost, what's the average amount that people spend on projects and which one is the cheapest, which one is the most expensive? Can you like just take us through that? I think um, I'll be only three minutes. Okay, so, sure. Yeah, just so you guys can hang in the way. Um, yeah, and just give me questions. All right. Okay, guys, so let's give Kunle a couple of minutes, like two to three minutes, to get to the place that is not noisy, so that he can address our question. So I would appreciate your patience as we wait for him. And um, please drop your questions in the chat box. I noticed some of you raising your hands when he was answering the first question. So if you still have any question that is not in the chat box, please. Just type it in the chat box so we can address it alongside the others.
All right. Um. So I think the less busy place. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yes. Welcome back, Wendy. All right. Um. I think I was working on cheap, uh, cheap projects. Yes. So projects with um, Doctor Yela B. Um. Projects with. Um, so for me, maybe if you just have to do this, um, um, I don't remember anybody, um, right now, but I think I'm going to do it for any other person because a larger you have to do, you have to do lab testing. You have to do lab testing. Um, also, you have to do lab testing. Um, I mean, for you also, you just started lab testing. My set, and that was myself and Danny and Boy and one other guy. That was Victor Art. So, um, you choose to do design that you used to do with other set this time around. Because I know Professor Okunos has been very lenient. He paid some of our. Um, lab fees like paid for some of our materials so you could probably if you end up with Sekumosa and is about to pick a topic and he tells you it's going to be loud just instantly that sir you understand I'm a <laughs> the, you understand the um situation of the country All right can you just please consider us doing something else something where we would have to do the work online you know review paper he's a reasonable person i don't i can't speak for that because he was my supervisor right so i know some people are very very concerned one of the reasons is because professor pomosa like he is he doesn't need to publish papers so there's no point in being stringent on a particular project of let just do what they want to do for what they can do if money doesn't allow them to do what you want them to do so they can get the hell out of there there's no there's no point stressing people you get so you can always use that maybe talk to your project supervisor that sir this thing is too expensive sir and i do something else say it in a very polite manner that you have that um any other questions okay and um, thank you Kwanli. then um Another question, still on project, is what is like, the average cost that people spend on project? The average what? Cost, like the average amount of money. <laughs> I, I can't see. I mean, so, all of, all of the, I think the highest average is 200k. That was last year. That was for a water project, 200k. About 200k, of course. And I think I don't know the lowest, right? But I think in my time I spent about a hundred k, and this hundred k was inclusive of the fact that we joined our resources together. So for like the lab guys now, the reduced structures, we needed to buy sand, we needed to buy cement, we needed to buy granite. Um, we I alone can't buy like a tip of sand. So we came together with like seven people that paid and put our money together and gave the lab guys the money to buy to buy the stand and buy the granite. So that we made um made costs less for us to get we put money together to buy cement. We we paid the lab guys to actually mix some of our stuff for us first. You guys, I don't think they will allow you guys to mix it, mix the stuff yourself. So you have to pay them for workmanship and all those things. So all those things cost money, right? And I think from my experience of working in the lab, if you're going to work in the lab, buy your, if they tell you cement today is 5,000 or 6,000 naira, please buy it today. In Nigeria, we are off today. You come, you wake up tomorrow morning, they tell you 500 naira is on it, and you have to buy maybe eight bags. That's like five times eight. You have 4,000 naira extra, so now start spending off of you. In an economy where there's no money, so try to procure your materials on time. So you actually like save money for yourself. 
that's what I can say about that. Okay, um, thank you, Kunle. Then is ECN CBT. ECN, yes, ECN is CBT. ECN is CBT, yes, during our time. And during our time, they just brought out just one past question. Because I remember um, Azim having 80. And it was due to the fact that it was the past question it was coincidentally within that morning that came out. Mm. So, yeah, you guys should please, after all the trades of, they will probably change the course content. They didn't change it. We don't know if it's going to happen with you guys. But, um, like I, I mentioned, like I tackled earlier, please read. Read your essay. Okay, and, and the questions, did they change the questions, or is it the same questions for everybody? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they didn't change the question. Like, they only, they only rearranged, like, my number one is different from my number two or something. But, like, okay. it was the same past question, yes. All right. Then, um, surface water hydrology, is it a calculation course? Uh, it is strictly theory. Um, there, are, there are a bit of calculations inside. The kind of calculations are calculations you find in environmental engineering by a larger. I think that water supply thing where we're doing IG and IR somewhere. These are the kind of calculations that I, yeah, yeah, that, that I, or service water hydrology, just little, little calculations. But it is a whole lot of books, you know, a lot of stuff that will blow you out that you have to read without AOC. The thought of AOC annoys the man. It gets very vexed when you say you want AOC. So please. Maybe you start reading it early or find a way to squeeze out AOC. The ball is in your court. Oh, wow. Okay, then um, we have another question. I yeah, heard that not all electives were available for you guys. So how and when did you guys know which electives were going to be available? Oh, cool. Um, not all electives were available for us. So I think... We had a lot of tantrums, like a lot of noise going around us to hey, your mom, I don't want to come back home first semester again. What Alexis am I supposed to be doing? And blah blah blah. Um, but the issue was there were a lot of electives on the school portal, but there were not enough lecturers taking them. I think that was the issue. So one thing you guys want to do is go to um, the department. Don't go to Professor Akiji because I don't know. I've not worked with him before. So I know he's a bit too mercurial, would I say? Because you don't know the mood you meet him wherever you go. But you can go to Dr. Adibaje. Dr. Adibaje will let you know what course is available. The lecturer is available to take them. So if you're doing um, a particular elective, you will know that this elective now, there's a lecturer to take it and you can pick this elective to do. So if there are like three electives, if there are three lecturers available for electives, you know there are three electives available. So I think that's what you should do. Don't just go ahead by picking electives. Anyhow, well, you can do that now. Now that you don't know anything, you guys have not resumed, you can register for your courses now. That nobody, they will always, you know, they will always open the portal later for you guys to edit your courses. So. That's what you can talk about that. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Kunle. So no that's all the questions we have in the chat box, but someone's hand is up. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. want please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Mama. Please, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I just want to ask about project. I just came in. Now and I think I need some information. So I just want to ask. Quick one. So for transport, uh, is it that I will spend like what the? Do you have an idea about anybody as uh, a supervisor? Yeah. Um, you want to do transport? Um, Adibaje, yes. Adibaje is your best bet. Doctor Adibaje and um, Doctor Akije. Uh, the transport guys in the department. Um, 
when we were getting our own project stuff, we we're getting people to be picking projects. Um, Dr. Abiodu created a Google form, and sent it to all of us, um, and told us to pick the our interest at first, right before sharing. Or so you will most likely get your interest. But if you don't get it, it's because probably when they got to your place, when they got to your name, your department or your department was filled up already and they threw you in your second interest. Or probably they didn't even throw you in your second interest, they just threw you somewhere else, right? So it happens. But yes, you can get Dr. Ali Bodje if you're, if you're being chosen. You, you, you probably not get Dr. Ali Bodje, you get thrown in transport first. So then it is later you not get Dr. Ali Bodje. But I don't know. When you are done, when they when they put you anywhere they put you, you can always go and talk to um the lecturer that arranges it. Probably it's going to be Dr. Engineer Falabi or Dr. Abiodun, and tell the person, Ma, I I have rapport with this particular lecturer. If you do, right? You could have spoken with the particular lecturer. Because I, I was speaking with Obaji at first, and I told Dr. Obaji that I wanted to work with him. And Dr. Obaji was like, ah, yeah, sure. Um, you look like a good student, professor student that would like to also work with you, blah, blah, blah. You can talk to um, Dr. Abiodi if you want it to happen. Um, that was at the time when I was falling in love with you, Dick. So if I continued that passion, I would have actually spoken with Dr. Abiodi and told him, and told, and told Dr. Abiodi that, please, man, I want to work with Dr. Abiodi, so just work with him. Easy peasy, I would have gotten that. So if you know you want to work with Dr. Abiodi, go and try to create a relationship with him now. So you can talk to whoever is in charge, telling the person, man, I have a relationship with this person. You can confirm from him or her, and I want to work with this person. Simple. You have that. Okay, All right, question. thank you. Yeah. Yes, I think that should answer his question. Thank you very much, Kunli. Um, yeah. Been, right. This has been really, really insightful. We really appreciate your honor and our education. For you sacrificing your time, even while on the road, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So no I would like to hand over the mic to Stephen right. to carry right. on with this session. Thank you very much, Conley. Thank you. So I can go now, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Want to see you do appreciate. <laughs> all right, sir. All right, sir. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Aisha, for that wonderful session. Um, I really took a lot of notes. In fact, it was very interesting that the speakers were trying to double into what um, other speakers had to address. And uh, I believe they gave it their best, even if they had to kind of sacrifice from their work time to um, honor our invitation. It's really impressive. We do appreciate um, their efforts. Um, and of course, thank you guys for uh, being present in this orientation. Um, we were really appreciative of that. So on behalf of the uh, student body, the Civil Engineering Student Society, I would like to appreciate all the speakers um, here in absentia as I speak uh, for taking out time of their busy schedule to speak to us on how we can achieve good results in the coming semester like they did. Um, we wish them all the best of luck in their present and future um, endeavors. Um, um, over the past two months, uh, for the new administration, which um, I'm privileged to serve as the president, uh, we also have the general secretary here present, um, Aisha Karimojo. Uh, we have actually done a bit to see how we can start um, our project early enough, which if you've observed, a couple of you are beneficiaries of the software training we've done already so far. And we even haven't, we haven't resumed yet. And um, we're currently organizing this orientation, which we started with um, the graduate school. I wish a number of you were in that meeting. It was really, really amazing. Like they actually pumped us up for the semester to come. And it gave us a lot of hope for we that are still trying to push uh, our CGPA beyond where it is. Yeah, so aside um, what we are currently doing, we are hoping to have our usual um, CES annual conference and design competition 
Um, trust me that all the things I mentioned here, if you've been in the past events, uh, you are yet to see what we are about to give you. Like, I'm hoping this will be the best you've ever experienced uh, since we've been in this school. And trust me on this, that will give you uh, the best experiences you hope to get. Uh, besides that, we'll be having the um, head of department games. I know it's been about three years, okay, since, since our 200 level, we haven't had any head of department games. So we are hoping that we can do that um, this session for you guys. We'll have a CES league, which some of you have heard of, uh, field trips. I, I believe you may not directly benefit from field trips because we just finished uh, our CES and a number of us are even kind of tired of being on site or being in the office, at least we need some break. So it may be more beneficial to lower levels. Um, we'll have more webinars, like the um, postgraduate orientation we had. We are planning more of those. And in the coming weeks and months, you'll see uh, what program we are going to put that under. Then we have the CES newsletter. Uh, we are trying to revamp the CES newsletter. In fact, we're supposed to release one in August, but we, we are digging deep to see how we can uh, provide a quality newsletter. That's why we are still delaying. So hopefully before the end of this month, we should see our first issue for this session. So more social events are going to be coming up. Then we have exam tutorials and um, many more, much more. So uh, for these above projects to be accomplished, right, we, we need your support, like each and every one of you, especially the fact that for I and Aisha here present are your mates, honestly we know that without your support there is there is what we can do is actually limited right so we actually need your support both in terms of uh, paying your dues which will soon open uh, payment for dues and also in volunteering if we uh, require your services uh, that would be it will be really beneficial for us if you can offer them and um yes basically so for the dues the dues is pegged at uh, three thousand which I believe we've seen from the uh, message that was passed across. So hopefully we'll open payment soon. Uh, thank you all for being present here. And um, we really appreciate for without you, there's no, there's no reason to organize uh, such events. So thank you so much. Do have a wonderful night rest. Thank you. Uh, Aisha. Okay, thank you guys so much for attending. It was lovely having all of you here. I hope we all took a thing or two from this session. So good night, everybody, and have a lovely evening.